I love lounging. But in case you're someone like me who doesn't have a lot of time to do that and you need really quick tips for how to build your Webflow site, I'm gonna show you three hacks of how to do your development time faster so you have time for the more important things like learning to cook or coloring. Hey everybody, welcome back to the No Code Creators channel. My name is Lacey. As you just saw, we are gonna go through the top three hacks I use to build websites even faster. If you're unfamiliar with Webflow, let me quickly explain why the platform is so great. So it's already really a fast working platform. You can design and develop and launch your website really quickly and that's so much better than what I've had to do before. I had to code. That's what I was doing, I was coding. It was awful, I hated it. It's not, I didn't enjoy it. So Webflow is a really great alternative to those of you who don't know how to code or don't want to code. So these tips have sped up my workflow. I'm able to show clients work sooner. I'm able to learn from using these things that I'm gonna walk through, especially number two, of how to go through and learn how to build out my own features in Webflow and use something as a foundation. So buckle up, let's go. All right, so we're in a project that I've done before and this is what I'm gonna go over is showing you how to use global colors and why they help so much with your project and keeping everything nice and consistent in your colors. So I'm gonna take this H1 right here and we're gonna go down and you can see it's this green color and I've used it, I used it in the logo in the top left and I already have it saved as a global color as this dark olive green. So let's say I wanna change it, this, this green here. So I'm gonna click this plus sign over here and Webflow will give it a name, but you could name it anything like weird green. And it will save that, so if I decide to come up, or let's just right here on this title, and I want to change it, and I want it to be that green, then I just come right over here, click that, and there we go. Now you're using global colors. It's a really great way to stay organized with your colors. So aren't global colors really cool? I guarantee you, in a coding platform, when you're hard writing this stuff in, you don't just get to go select your colors. You're actually gonna type in everything. It makes stuff so much faster. So with that, let's get into tip number two. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is go over using a style guide. Using a style guide in every single project really speeds up your workflow. It helps you stay very consistent. And I like it because I can visually see how everything looks together. So I can see how all my um, headings look together with my paragraph, make sure that everything is blending and getting this really good cohesive look for my website. So this is one that I actually cloned and I'll put the link in the description below so that you can go and clone it for your own future projects. And it's it also works as a really good starting point. So let's say let, like right here, you have your button and you want to change your button. Let's say we want to change the you know, purple. And so whenever it has this class, you'll see over here on the right, a button. So what that means is, is when you start your project and you give it the class of button, it's going to take on the um, features of that class. So it's gonna take on the color, it's gonna take on the font, the weight, the size, etc. everything that you've set for it. So you're not having to design the same thing over and over and over again. You just set it one time and then use it. This also works for your text colors. You have multiple main colors that are given classes that you can call them and you can also still see how everything looks you know in your project same for logos um, this se section especially I found to be really helpful the component section is when you've got to drop a form into a website or tabs anything like that you can go ahead and start from this starting point and then you can build onto it if you need to. You can you know, also use 
copy paste and create new elements. Just make sure, let's put, um, you know, you could do phone, num phone number. And then you make sure and change your input type from email to phone. And then change your placeholder. You know, enter your phone number. And I think change the name to phone number. And how easy is that? So it's a really great place um, to start off on all of your projects. And I, again, the information will be in the description below so that you can put this in your projects. It gives you a head start, makes it so much faster. And I really think this is a really handy thing to start off every project with. I absolutely love style guides. I hope that was a really good walkthrough for you of how to use it and implement it into your project. You can find the link below of the exact style guide that I used, and it really does speed things up. It makes your site consistent. You have everything that you need right there. You can always access it and change it, and it will change across your entire site as long as all your class names are consistent with that style guide. All right, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is using clonable sites and the copy paste feature also in your project. So I have a folder on my dashboard that's called Inspiration Clone Sites. And every single morning when I log into Webflow, I go to Showcase and then click Clonable and I look through all the clonable sites and I clone any sites that I like or I think they're really cool or they have some neat features and this is also a fantastic way to learn how to build more using Webflow because you can break it down and see how the person who built the site what what steps they took so let's click into one um, oh and this is also great there people are putting UI kits on here so it's also really nice to kind of have some different um, components that you can mix and match together to build even faster and let's do um, I thought this was really cool someone did a Twitter clone and so you open it up and just preview it and you can see that this person did a really good job and I'll put the link below in the description to this as well of a Twitter site and it's like hmm I wonder you know how did they how did they do this so you can click on an element let's grab let's do this nav column and then you can kind of just start to pull it apart and see what they did how it's styled over here on the right what they chose like you can see sticky position um, you can see more of like into the details the font the colors all of that so it really gives you a great idea of how to dissect a project and then put it back together. Um, it's also awesome for, let's get out of this one, go in another one. It's also really great for taking components and putting them into your project. So I've actually used this before on a project and I really like it. And we'll go down and get out of that. And let's say I want these, there's steps here. One, two, three and I really like that that process and so I want to use it in a project so let's get to the very top of it I think it's just this whole section here and you hit copy and then I can paste it into this body right here and then there we go I've got it and now it's easy for me to use. Hey everyone, I hope those tips were really helpful for you. Next week, I'm gonna walk through my process of building an app and show you exactly step-by-step step what I would do. We're going to use a platform that I actually haven't gotten to use too much before, so I'm really excited about it. And there's going to be a template that you can download and use so you can create your own app off of it. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when videos are released. I hope to see you there. Bye.